I, I came in this, this radio station with three newspapers. And um, yesterday's newspaper, Rice Earnings, top 51 billion. Rice Earnings, top 51 billion. That's 250 million US dollars. Rice bring in. You hear that, Kimo? And last year, we got 185 million from our oil. So it's like it's, it's, better, it's better to plant rice than to give away the oil. Because if rice is bringing in, and this is not me saying so, look at the newspaper, this is the headline of the Guyana Chronicle. You understand? So I am convinced that these guys, these guys doesn't really do, doesn't know what's, what's, what's happening in this land. R if rice you will get this. Look, look. Another one. Premier Insurance Company Inc. enters market. This is today's company capable of insuring an oil rig. Plans to offer a wide range of service. Oh, oh, is everybody coming here now? They come to insure. They come to insure, they come for your oil money. So instead of 185, that might decrease. The more people come, is more, de more, more depletion of, your, um, of your, your, your oil wealth. Is everybody know Guyana now? You think they're coming to insure anybody? They're coming for your damn money. And hold on. The, the oil money may not be enough. They, they, they will end up into your gold and your rice and your, your, your timber money. Yeah. Mm hmm Today's Kai Chow News. Jagdeo laments liberal tax regime in Stabrook agreement, but makes no comment to fix it. You see, this guy understand, he understand that Guyana made a terrible mistake in granting tax waivers to ExxonMobil. He been complaining about that in the opposition, while they were in the opposition. But just like the local content policy never, kick, never come into place, a depletion policy or a plan can't come into place, he's now saying that, hey, we accept. It's a, it was a terrible thing. It's a, it's a bad um, um, decision we make by giving away um, eggs on all these tax breaks. But yet, on to now, they're not saying that, hey, we will fix that. We could correct that so that Guyana can benefit. All you're hearing, we just agreeing and accepting. But the real, the real policies and plans to put in place to fix these things, they're not. So it makes you want to, want to, to, to think. Makes you, makes you wonder whose interest these people are working in. Is the Guyanese people? You can go ahead. All right, now. The first question that we have from someone who texted us is... Mm -hmm. How much are we losing, Mr. Lal? In, in term in revenue, in revenue, in in revenue, mm -hmm. in the in the in the first three well, mm -hmm. right? I am positive that they did not spend half of that money. They say they spent eighteen billion. I believe in my heart that they didn't spend nine, because and guess what? We are asking them for the breakdown. They're just handing you bills. You tell, tell us, give us the breakdown. And they're, and they're not giving you that. They're, they just tell you, hey, 3.5 billion we spent on this, on, on Lisa 1. 4.4 on Lisa 2. No, you got to give us the breakdown, bro. We are losing out. We are losing out big time on these projects. And the person who asked the question need to understand, Kimal, that when we're talking about billions in US dollars, this thing is not penny. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta equate that to what you would be getting per year. You know, a senior government man tell me that when they, when they are at full speed with all the wells, Guyana will be, will be bringing in one billion US a year. You hear that? So imagine if you get knocked nine, nine billion US from three well. You are talking about nine years of Guyana's oil. If the one billion is co is correct. I don't believe it's correct. I believe you, you wouldn't get half of a billion. But let's go with what the senior official, I could call his name, but I don't want to. But I, I, 
I just go in with what he said. One billion, let's live it up. So if you can knock nine billion dollars on three well, imagine you got 18 more. And if you can knock another 30 billion, you're talking about, oh, you, I know you got a billion a year, you don't have a 30 year you, you, oil, oil money you lose there. What influences you to say that the 18.5 billion Exxon Mobil claims the developments will cost, that it's not that much that they'll have to spend on Lisa 1, Lisa 2, and Payara? Yes. All right. That's a, that's, that's a, that's a very nice question. Um, Kimal, the track record of these oil companies speaks not volume, talks about skullduggery and scampishness and inflation beyond. They have inflated, they have inflated uh, countries' costs that left them broke, that left them in debt. So I don't have to, and, and when they don't want to come clean and tell you, well, here, I buy this, I spend this, I do this. Man, it's very, it's very, it's very open for one to conclude that scampishness and skullduggery is, is at its best here right now. Let me, let, me, let me add a little piece to that. The bills that they will be throwing at us, if they do throw, throw the bills at us, we cannot check it. You can't verify it. Because they, and we, we carried all these stories before in Okimaru. They are doing business with people, with countries that just do not divulge information to other nations. So if they buy pipes out of, out of New Zealand, and you, they buy 10,000 length of pipes, and they hand you a bill for whatever, 2 billion US dollars. You can't go ask New Zealand anything. You just have to accept that bill because New Zealand will tell you plain, we didn't do business with Guyana. We do business with ExxonMobil. Mm -hmm. Go ask them. So this is why I'm telling you, not even out of the 80, not even 9. I would say they didn't even spend 4. So we are talking about almost 14 billion inflation we're talking about. Or scampishness and skullduggery. I'm not saying who, who got and who get a piece or who get a sutton. I'm not saying. I know sutton pass all over. You know a sutton, right? Sutton. I, I all right, don't. You don't know. I, good. All right, leave it as you don't know. Once the Guyanese people understand what's sutton, me happy with that. And I'm glad you don't understand what's a sutton. All right, now, one other individual <coughs> wants to know. Mm. Carl Greenwich seems to be rolling with the PPP now. Mm -hmm. Is that a good sign for Guyana? <laughs> Carl Greenwich. I like that question. I like that question. I like that person. That person got a good sense of humor. You know, Carl Greenwich, if, if you remember, he was, the, he was the main man. He was the main man with Exxon. As a matter of fact, I could give you several stories on Carl Greenwich. He was, he was, he was livid. This man was, and I, tell, I think he still is, extremely upset that Kaicho News is reporting on oil in this country. Kaicho News is reporting on ExxonMobil and the oil, oil, oil industry. This man, like, he don't want nobody to say anything, anything about this. You mustn't say nothing. Guyana's oil, the, what the world talking about, he doesn't want you to, uh, to say nothing. Extremely upset. You know, that, does that tell you a story? Which bed he's lying in? Whose interest he's looking out for? Yeah. And guess what? Now he moved. And jump in with bed with the PPP. Man. Just do the maths for me, please. Do the maths. This thing can't have a little maths. Me can't do maths. Me, I was at the bright, at the bright, but this kind of maths, I can't do it. You think, think about why I just tell you that. As a matter of fact, um, Jan Mangal said that he played, a, uh, he played a key role. Very key role. He was in, in, the, in, the, in the oil sector during the coalition in power. And uh, he said clearly that um, Carl Greenwich is one of them who didn't want the contract to be to be to go in the open. Mm -hmm. So what that tells you? Why I'll have to hide? Why you don't want the people to know? Whose interest you working in? That's about it. I'll say about him. You know. Um, let me add a little piece. They talk about you talk about him. Yes. Look, Vincent Alexander, Vi Vincent Adams, right? That the PPP sent home. They send the man on leave. Then they take the man back onto now. That man should have been working with the PPP, with the, with the PPP there now. He is the man who, who was responsible for, for getting full insurance, unlimited in, in, insurance on Payara project. You know we don't have 
uh, full insurance on Lisa 1 and Lisa 2. But he told them plain. I said, no, 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 you can't do that. A spill come in this, in, this, in this country and mess up the whole region and Guyana, who's paying? No, you got to come with a proper insurance. And he and the, I think we, we had a little chat. He said they, they were very upset with him. And he said, no, once I'm sitting here as a boss, Guyana should be protected at all costs. Right? When you hear people like, when you see man do things like that, you should keep people like them around you. But guess what? You kick the man. You don't want that man there. Look, the PPP has, the PPP also has, um, um, what did, uh, Ramson, young Ramson. Yes. Young Ramson studied um, oil and gas. And he is in the PPP. He is a minister, but minister for sports. They moved the man. They put a man who's qualified in oil and gas and put him for, for kickball and play round doors. And they take a teacher one over computer. A teacher, a school teacher. One over computer. I make the man minister of oil and gas. Is what kind of crap going on in this land? You guys understand what's playing out here?